Okay, let's see if I can explain how to set up telemetry on this Tyrannus radio. Uh, first you'll notice I'm using a variable voltage power supply and yes the props are still on but the beauty of a current limited supply is if you do try and arm the quad or arm it by mistake the most that'll happen is telemetry lost. Telemetry it just recovered. resets the power supply and it won't even let the motor spool up. The other handy thing for this is if you can see very closely the power supply voltage on the power supply and the telemetry reported on the radio and as you dial it up or dial it down, you can see that the voltage follows and is really good for troubleshooting this. Now, to business. In order to set this up, you need to go into your logical switches, which is behind the telemetry and special functions if you go backwards. Now you can see here, L1 and L2 are different thresholds for battery voltages. L1 would be for a 3 cell, L2 would be for a 4 cell. L3 is the important one. Uh, the first part of L3, which is this A is less than X, is looking at the input of your throttle stick. Um, the throttle stick is, is looking for the throttle stick to be less than the threshold of 40, which is the second parameter, which you can configure and it really depends on how you want to do it. The other section of it on this, where it says AND switch, is an AND function with, in this case, switch B. Um, I have this as a dummy switch. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just to illustrate it. Normally it's switch A, which is my arm switch. But it's expecting switch B to be up and the throttle to be less than 40. So if I switch switch B up, you can see that L3 and L2 went high. Now if I move the throttle stick, you'll see L3 just went low, and you can use that to fine-tune whereabouts on your throttle range you want it to trigger. You can just set the position you want, and then you can come back to this value here and just slowly start working it up until you get the results you want. I keep mine at about 40, which is a pretty decent punch-out, um, which corresponds to about right about there on my throttle stick, which is about eh, three quarters, give or take. Um, the arm switch, whether or not you want to use it is entirely up to you. But you can see that L3 is also the AND function of L1 and L2. Now on the special functions, I have, uh, it would be special functions four and five, which call out the battery voltage. Low battery, the actual phrase low battery, and then the second part, which actually isn't configured right now, play value, and I want to set that to VFAS, which is my telemetry. And I passed it, so just go back and find VFAS. Now we can force the radio using this power supply to give us the uh, give us the results we want. Um, again, going back to the digital power supply, right now it's dialed in at 12.3 volts. Well, let's simulate low throttle with the arm switch, so L3 is high. Now if we start turning down the voltage, when we get below 10.35 volts, low battery 10.3 volts, and then as long as that voltage stays low, it will repeat every 10 seconds until the voltage climbs. Low battery, 10.3 volts. And then as the voltage climbs back up, and even if you go higher than 13.7, you can see that L1 and L2 both went low. So that's pretty much how it works. Um, you can just use logic functions with switch mixing and whatever thresholds you want to, uh, you can make your battery monitors ignore the, uh, ignore the throttle position. And in order to do that, let's say you throttle up high on a punch out and your battery voltage drops down to, let's say, see now we're at 9.9 .9 volts and it still hasn't called out anything. But as soon as that throttle stick comes back down, low battery 9.8 volts. And there she is. Hope this helped explain everything. Uh, good luck programming.